And I remember when I first got saved, I got so turned on to this. I thought, man, this is just superhero stuff right here, man. He says, for one who speaks in an unknown tongue speaks not to men but to God. For no one understands or catches his meaning. Because in the Holy Spirit, he utters secret truths and hidden things. All right, now watch this. So when you speak in tongues, you're uttering hidden truths. And you're speaking uh, secret truths and hidden things. Things that are hidden from the comprehension of your mind. Things that are hidden from your understanding. But when I speak in tongues, I'm speaking those secret truths and I'm speaking those hidden things. Glory be. Now that's what I know. Now I may not have the interpretation right away, but I know when I speak in tongues, I'm saying some good stuff. And that's what fires me up. I'm saying some good stuff. <clears throat> he says, I'm speaking hidden things that are not obvious to my understanding. All right. Verse three. But he that prophesies speaketh unto men to edification, exhortation, and comfort. All right. Now, if I prophesy to you, I'm going to prophesy to your understanding. Thus saith the Lord, you know, you have come to the place where you have understood this and understood that, but I am about to do some amazing things in your life, saith the Lord. You understood every word I said. Okay? But I can also prophesy, Did you understand what I said? So I still prophesize, but you didn't understand what I said. So Paul's getting ready to set order in the church and says, Now, there's no such thing, I don't want no prophesying going on to the church if people can't understand it. Does everybody follow what I'm saying? All right, so we move on. So he says, prophecy is for edification, exhortation, and comfort. Edification, building you up, exhorting you, and to add comfort. So I shouldn't be prophesying something to you that's going to add fear. So somebody comes up to you and says, Thus saith the Lord, you'll be dead by 12 o'clock. Say, that ain't even God. Get out of here. That's not God. God is not going to prophesy something to you that's going to produce fear. It's going to produce what? Comfort. Comfort. And I, hear, I see it over and over again. People call themselves prophets, and they're prophesying fear. That's not comfort. That's not comfort. All right? Verse 4. He that speaketh in an unknown tongue, now, who gets edified? Certainly you don't. If I, if I prophesy to you in tongues, you don't understand it, so you're, you can't be built up or edified. But check this out. He that speaketh in an unknown tongue, edified who? You are edifying yourself. You are, when I speak in tongues, I am building myself up. I am building myself up spiritually. I'm building up myself in my soul. I'm building myself up in my physical body. Do you not understand that speaking in tongues is almost like a multivitamin to your flesh? And it, it's peace to your soul. And it stirs you up in your spirit. So you, when you speak in tongues, you are being edified. But he says, but he that prophesies in an, uh, to your understanding edifies the church. No church person is built up if somebody's speaking where you can't understand. Now here's the funny thing about it. There's some preachers that don't speak in tongues and I still don't understand what they're saying. <laughs> And all you get and get what? You know what I'm saying? All right, look at verse 5. I would that you all speak with tongues. Now, here's Paul. This is Paul. I would that you were all speaking tongues, but rather that you prophesied. Now, over the year, years, people took this and said, see, Paul said prophesying is greater than tongues. That's not what he said. He said, I would rather when you're speaking to people, I would rather that you will prophesy unto them rather than speaking in tongues unto them where they don't understand it. But now follow it, follow along what he says. For greater is he that prophesies than he that speaketh with tongue, except he interpret that the church may receive edifying. So he says the issue is not whether speaking in tongues is uh, less uh, impactful than uh, than prophesying, he says, and and, and I, the word impact is probably the wrong one. He, he he's not talking about which one is greater. He is saying 
understanding and edification is the objective. So if you prophesy, they need to understand you. And if you speak in tongues to them, you need to give them interpretation so they need to understand you. The objective is they need to understand you. Okay? So if you're going to prophesy to the church in, in tongues, you need to follow up with an interpretation. You can't just get up in a church unless you're talking to God. But if I come out here and I, and I look at you and say, Rabo Christe, Rabba, Tola, Rabba, Basha, and then go on to my, all right, Lord, let's just praise the Lord. You can't do that because this is the bill like, what do we say? He says, don't do that because without understanding and without being built up, it's a waste. So he says, now I would, I would rather you speak with understanding so that the hearer can be built up than you trying to be spiritually deep and speak in tongues with no interpretation and cause confusion. Okay? Uh, verse 6. Now, brethren, if I come unto you speaking with tongues, what shall I profit you except I shall speak to you either by revelation or by knowledge or by prophesying or by doctrine. Verse, uh, next verse. And even things without life giving sound, whether pipe or harp, except they give a distinction in the sounds, how shall it be known what is pipe or harp? If pipe and harp had the same sound, there would be no distinction to know whether it was pipe or harp because it sounds the same. Eight. For if the trumpet gives an uncertain sound, somebody says, well, don't move until you hear the trumpet. And then he blows the trumpet and it sounds like this. <laughs> if it gives an uncertain sound, who shall prepare himself to the battle? Oh, I blew the trumpet, but it didn't sound like a trumpet. Next verse. So likewise, ye, except you utter by the, by the tongue words easy to be understood, how shall it be known what is spoken for you shall speak into the air. Ten. There are, it may be, so many kinds of voices in the world, and none of them is without signification. Eleven. Therefore, I know not the meaning of the voice. I shall be unto him that speaketh a barbarian, and he that speaketh shall be unto me a barbarian. So if I'm going to say something to you, and you don't know what I'm talking about, I come up to you and I say, this should Christ, this my kuseliata. And you say, okay. <laughs> All right. All right, look what he says. Even so, you, for as much as you are zealous of spiritual gifts, seek that you may excel to the edifying of the church. The gifts are for the church. Tongues is for the church. Main objective, edify. Seek to edify. Verse 13. Wherefore, let him that speaketh in an unknown tongue Pray that he may interpret. If I spend a certain amount of time praying in tongues, one of the final things I'm going to say before I get up is, Lord, give me the interpretation and understanding of what I've been praying about. And if he chooses to do so, I'm open to it. Some of the time, you might not get the interpretation because it might cause problems. It might cause fear. If you knew where you were going and what you were going to do, it might not be a good idea to let you know what you were praying for. But you gave birth to something that's awesome. And you built yourself up in your most holy faith. Look at this, verse 14. Might as well go ahead and finish this. For if I pray in an unknown tongue, what, what is Now, man is a, a spirit, right? He possesses a what? A soul, right? And he lives in a what? Physical body. All right. You are not your body. You are a spirit being. You are not your soul. You are a spirit being. Religion has used the word spirit and soul interchangeably as if they're the same. Oh, Lord, save my soul. Soul. They're really talking about their spirit. You are a spirit being. You have a soul. You are a spirit being. You have a soul. You don't have a spirit. You are a spirit. You possess a soul. You live in a physical body. Now, if you read the Bible understanding the anatomy of a man, then you'll read certain scriptures like in 3 John where it says that, you know, the, the spirit part of you cannot sin because it's already born again and it's like God and it's sealed with, with the Holy Spirit of promise. But if you don't know that, you'll go around thinking, wait a minute, that, that can't be possible. You are a spirit being. Say, I am a spirit being. I, am a spirit being. I have a soul. Yes. My soul is my mind, my will, and my emotions. My soul is where my thinker, my filler, and my chooser reside. 
That's my soul. That's my soul. That's the part. Your soul is in between your spirit and your body. It's the cockpit of life. It is where the piloting takes place. If you do not renew your mind, then that will determine whether you lean more towards your body rather than leaning more towards your spirit. The word is spirit and life. And you have to renew your mind. I'm going to talk about that this Sunday because you won't ever step into the will of God for your life unless you know how important it is to daily renew your mind. And everything you come up with, ask yourself, what does the word have to say about this? Renewing the mind is so vitally important. So he says, for I pray, for if I pray in an unknown tongue, my spirit prays. So my spirit, by the Holy Spirit, prays. Now what happens when your born again spirit prays by the Holy Spirit? You are praying a perfect prayer. What? You can pray a perfect prayer when you're praying in tongues because your spirit man is perfect. When you got born again, your body didn't get born again. Your soul didn't get born again. When you got born again, uh, uh, the only part of you that, that was impacted by that decision was your spirit. The old man passed away and the new creation came in. That part of you that's born again is your spirit man. Your spirit man is perfect. It is just like God. Your spirit man is, 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 is heaven ready. The rest of the time you're renewing your mind to get your mind, your will, your emotions to line up with that perfect part. See, the word is spirit. So your spirit man already connects with the word of God. And if you can use the word of God to renew your soul, then your soul and your spirit comes together and they will make your body fall in line. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. But I can pray a perfect prayer. How? By praying in the Holy Ghost. I don't want to risk just praying in English. I want to spend time praying perfect prayers. How many of y'all ready to pray some perfect prayers? There is, a, there, is a, there is a spirit of apathy that I am battling in the church right now. I see it, and all it does is it just stirs me up. I won't let it win. I'm going to get your attention. I'm going to snatch you out of apathy, snatch you out of the pit of hell, snatch you out of what a de whatever deception you're in. Whenever I feel the Holy Spirit giving me a word for somebody, I say it anyway. I want to stir them up. I want to let them know the Holy Ghost knows what's going on, and I just delivered a message to you. The gifts of the Spirit is what's going to shake things up in these last days. Amen. Not just this is the way we come to church. Not just, you know, this is our Sunday morning coming to church. It's when you come up to somebody and a gift starts working. You start prophesying to them. You start giving a word of knowledge. You start you start giving a word of wisdom. You, you start doing that. It'll wake them up like, how do you know that? I, I don't, but the Holy Ghost does. Hallelujah. I pray that the gifts of the Spirit will start operating in your life like never before. And use it with your children. Use it with your children, praise God. Prophesy to them, praise the Lord. Say what the Lord say. Show them what you saw. Something happens when they realize, oh, oh mama and them know God. Amen. 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 Praise God. Amen. For I, if I pray in an unknown tongue, forgive me for getting excited, but we have the advantage. Don't look at the world and think they have the advantage. We have the the advantage. Amen. If I pray in an unknown tongue, my spirit prays, but my understanding is unfruitful. Verse 15. When is it then? I, I, I'll pray with the spirit. I'll pray with the spirit, and I'll pray with the understanding also. Alright, so I. what does it mean when he says pray with the spirit, or pray in the spirit, or pray in the Holy Ghost? What does that mean? Praying in tongues. Praying in tongues. Uh, but I'll pray with the understanding also. What is he, what is he talking about praying? And you're in your, your articulate language. He says, I'll sing with the Spirit. There you go. You can sing in the Spirit. You ever been in church on some Sunday morning? We, go, we get to singing in the Spirit. Awesome song. Awesome song. What's them awards they get for music? They, they, if they knew what was going on, they'd award that every day. 
a Grammy for it. If they knew the words. And every now and then God gives us an interpretation of those words and we write a praise song out of it. Oh, when I'm, 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 I'm believing God for praise leaders that are praying the Holy Ghost and start writing music from the interpretation of the songs that they begin to sing in the spirit. <laughs> What are you doing? I'm singing in the spirit. I love right now, I'm singing in understanding because you understand what I'm saying right now. Sign me up for the Christian Jubilee. <laughs> Write my name on the roll. I've been changed since Jesus lived in me. You understand that? But he talks about singing in the spirit. And singing with the understanding. That needs, that's not been taught in churches a lot. When most people hear singing in the spirit, they're thinking, oh, I'm spiritual and I'm singing. That ain't what singing in the spirit is. Oh, let one of us come from one of them churches. It doesn't have to be mysterious. It doesn't have to be spooky. But some people just make it spooky. You got some spooky pookies in the church. You understand? Y'all know what I'm talking about. Just spooky people, you know. Hey, how you doing? Mm. And you looking like, for real? Or you put your hand out to shake that hand. And, mm. I'm like, turn my hand loose now. Turn my hand loose. Turn my finna slap you. Turn my hand loose. Because the Bible says that the spirit of the prophet is subject to the prophet. Ain't none of this out of control stuff. The Holy Ghost made me do that. Spirit of the prophet is subject to the prophet. You stand up in the middle of the message. That said the Lord. No, no, that, that ain't the Holy Ghost. That ain't, that ain't the Holy Ghost. Sit yourself. That ain't the Holy Ghost. The Spirit of prophet said to Well, the Lord told me to say that. Listen, I is the pastor. If he wants something said, he'll say it through me. Sit yourself down. <laughs> Verse 16. Else when, now this is what I was getting to. Else when thou, all right, so singing in the spirit is, is what? Sing, singing, singing with the understanding is what? Okay, praying in the spirit is what? Praying with the understanding is? All right, watch this now. Else when thou shalt bless with the spirit. shall he that occupied the room of the unlearned say amen at the giving of thanks seeing he understandeth not what thou sayest alright so we're talking about thanking and blessing God with the spirit he didn't say something was wrong with it he was saying take note of who's in the room that would not be the time when grandmama asked you to bless the food that is not the time for you to say, chicken, rose, apple pie, that ain't, the, that ain't the time. You done scared everybody. They think <laughs> something is so wrong with you. Nobody in the room is going to be blessed at the giving of thanks. They don't know that. Know who's in the room. There have been times where people in the room have all been born again Christians filled with the Holy Spirit and we would bless the food and then we take some time and, and give God thanks in tongues we could do that everybody in the room knew what was going on and if you go around the world and been some of the places that I've been in huh, I told you the first meal I had overseas was looking at me and at that time, I didn't care who was in the room. I started whispering. Ha, la, la, ba, sha, la, la, sha. <laughs> I went to this church and it was, it was outdoors. And, you know, I, I didn't pray in the spirit on one of the meals and it got to my stomach. I was up all night long. I ain't had nothing in me but air. I apologize. That, that probably drew a picture. So I'm I'm introduced and I'm coming up to the uh, to the podium. This was maybe 20 years ago, 20 something years ago. 
And all of a sudden, these people start barking, sounding like hyenas and animals. There was a move, that move of God that went on in, I think, some place else in Florida. You remember that, Judge? It was, it was wild back. I don't remember what part of Florida it was. I don't want to call the name. But they, it, it went left. The, the movement started real good. It was a really strong revival, and they just started doing all kinds of stuff, like uh, sounding like animals. You know, I go up there, I'm like, what the? and you know, I, I ain't got nothing in me, you know, so I'm, I'm, and, and I said, I had to kiss myself. I said, what, what the, what, what's, what's going on? The pastor replied, they're interceding. I said, that ain't intercession, bro. Are you tired of going through the motions 